Did you know some airlines offer a special media discount for your checked bags if you fly with camera or film equipment? The kicker is you need one of these. This year I flew 65,000 miles for a major broadcast company and because I'm freelance, they never gave me a media pass. So I made my own. Hmm. It's got my address right there. I should maybe not show people my address. Yo, yo, Josh, yo. Today we're talking travel hacks that every filmmaker should know. First one, you gotta make your own media pass. If you are a filmmaker or you have a camera and you work commercially, or you're a sound man and you work commercially, by commercially I mean you got one of these that says I work in the film industry, I do media stuff, right? Business card you are eligible for a discount on your checked audio or camera equipment. In fact, the discount can be really, really good depending on what airline. American, Alaskan, Delta, Southwest, United, and Virgin all have media rates for checked luggage. You have to read the policy fine print. Some of the companies want a photo ID with a company insignia, yada, yada, yada. Others are fine with a business card. I would encourage you guys not to abuse this. This is for heavy film equipment or sound equipment. You know, those big Pelican cases, they add up. Now, if you're worried about the legality of this, this is not in the same category as real press credentials. Those are issued by like the sheriff's station. Those will get you access to press events, get you behind caution tape and fire lines. This is a media pass and not press credentials. See this, we got a filmmaker pass, filmmaker pass, media pass, media crew, all, all access media pass. Somebody made these. They're not real press credentials. If you guys wanna see how I made this one, check out this video right here, and I take you through my whole Photoshop workflow as we do the photo, the layout, the information, and even the little hologram. See, got a, got a little hologram there. If you don't wanna make your own, there are companies that do it online, but making your own is punk rock, so I'm not gonna recommend any websites. Make your own. Be a boss. The best part is, is I put my travel documents on the back, so I always have them. I have my known traveler number on there, so I can just cut right through TSA line. Oh, I haven't talked to you guys about that one. Pre-TSA is by far the best thing you can do if you travel more than once a year. It's $85 for an application, and it lasts five years. And basically, I will never say basically ever again. It's essentially a pre-screening process that allows its members to access an expedited security line. They don't have to take off their shoes, they don't have to take off their belts, they don't have to take out their laptops. You walk right on through. I cannot describe how amazing it is to cut in front of a hundred grumpy people carrying their shoes and schlepping along. You have to make an appointment. They do a whole background check for you, so you're gonna wanna make sure you have a clean record. I don't know how clean. Um, I've been arrested on more than one occasion. And I got through fine. The appointment process takes about 30 minutes, but the whole mailing in and gathering information and creating an appointment takes about two weeks. So you're gonna wanna give yourself enough time to get that through before your trip. I mean, this is obviously just for Americans. So for all my friends overseas and there is a world pass, but I'm not sure if they have, it's a whole can of worms, can't, not gonna get into right now. <clears throat> Delete this part from the video. Now they assign you a known traveler ID number. So you wanna keep track of this number and you enter it 
when you book your flight. Your boarding pass will print with a pre-TSA stamp on there, and then you show airport security your stamp, and they direct you to your own expedited line. And since we printed our own media pass, I put my known traveler number on the back so I don't have to dig through emails or paperwork to try to find it. It's right there. I know, you guys don't know me yet, but I'm all about saving time and money. Number three. This is more of a industry hack than it is a travel hack, but if you apply it to traveling, it works even better, I think. Us cameramen, we all have the same bags. We all have Pelican, or Think Tank, or Logic, or is Logic a real one? Maybe I just made that up. Because I can't tell you how many flights I've been on where there's other cameramen and they have the same exact bag as me. Not even the same looking. It's the same bag. Check this out. Strip of gaff tape on the handle. It identifies my bag. It makes it easy for me to spot it at the airport. This is how you know. I don't know why someone hasn't done this yet, but they need to add a quarter inch thread into a battery bank. I've seen YouTubers do the smaller cylindrical battery banks and they mount it right here on the hot shoe, which is awesome. That definitely works. I wanted one on the bottom because I wanna be able to mount this on my gimbal and not ever have to take it off. One of the problems is swapping out the batteries so often, especially with the Sony series. This is my primary shooter camera. It's a Sony a7S II. I fly everywhere with this thing. The problem is, is that this battery will last about 20 minutes. I have 10 of them. If I travel, I have to fly with 10 batteries and like five chargers. I just mounted a cheese plate and now you see that little power sign right there? That means it's charging. This is a 10,000 milliamp battery bank so it's the equivalent of seven and a half batteries that I have in here. So you have one of these, you charge it up overnight and you're good all day. And so I made this from a spare battery bank lying around, a cheese plate I ordered for $7.99 on Amazon, a hot shoe mount for like $6.99, and a little cable, and some JB Weld epoxy. Now if you wanna be able to mount this to a tripod or a gimbal, you'll have to repeat the process for the bottom. I left a link in the description below for all the parts check your camera to make sure it's compatible and what their input voltage is. If it's five volts, you're good. That's what I got for travel hacks. I got some rapid fire videos coming out, so if you guys haven't already jumped on board, I'd love for you to subscribe, comment, let me know what you guys are into, and after I kind of equalize, I'll start taking requests and doing some really cool stuff. Anyway, this is Josh O saying thank you very much, stay creative, go make some art.